Hey millionaire, we all love money when it's working for us, but what about when things take a turn for the worst? Recessions can be pretty scary. One minute your money was worth loads, the next, you can't buy a cup of coffee. But that doesn't have to happen. Scary or not, there are ways to make sure you survive the recession without too much damage to your funds. Hopefully, our guide to surviving a recession makes you feel calmer and helps your bank balance too. If you're wondering exactly what a recession is, here's a simple answer. It's an economic downturn. But if you prepare for the worst, you'll get through it easily. Here are our simple tips for recession-proofing your life. You'll thank us later. Seven, save save and then save some more i can't say this enough saving is always important but it's essential if you're going to survive a recession and we're not very good at it the federal reserve report from 2019 shows that a whopping 40 percent of americans can't afford a 400 dollars unexpected expense that's a shocking statistic and it shows just how little we have in savings this can be a really bad thing in a recession when everything costs more and your wages don't grow to match. Worse, a lot of people are likely to lose their jobs in a recession. If you're one of those people who can't afford an extra $400, you need to start saving right now. And if you do have $400 in the bank, you still need to save. Even rich people save their money in case of emergencies. But how much should you save? As much as possible. But try to put enough money into savings to keep you going for three to six months without any income. If you're in the U.S., putting that cash in a federal deposit insurance corporation insured account is probably your best bet. It means you can access your money easily while also making sure it retains its full value no matter what the economic situation is. You can't predict the future, so you need to be prepared for anything. Number six. Delay big purchases. Have you been planning on buying a new house? Or maybe you want to renovate the one you're in already? You might need to put those big expenses on hold for a while. Anything like a new car, a holiday, or that bit of furniture you've been wanting can eat into your savings at the time you need the money most. Do everything you can to avoid these large expenses until the economy starts an upswing again. When there's a recession on the way, it's better to put that money into savings instead. You'll thank yourself later if something goes wrong during the economic downturn and you have money in the bank to bail you out. Don't forget the value of DIY in the middle of a recession. And you don't need to feel like you're missing out either. If everything goes well and you aren't forced to use that cash, you'll still be able to buy that holiday later. And you'll enjoy it even more because you won't be stressing about spending cash you might really need later. Were you planning on any big purchases? Tell us what they were in the comments and if you're going to follow our advice. Number 5. Live within your means. If you're thinking you just don't have enough money to put any into a savings account, then you're probably living beyond your means. In other words, you're spending more money than you should be. I know times are tough, but you should start thinking about cutting down on anything you don't need. It might even be time to start thinking about downsizing your house. The more expenses you can cut down, the more money can go into your emergency savings fund. Or, if you're married or living with a partner, think about taking this a step further and living off just one of your wages. This helps in two ways. First, the other partner's unused wages can go straight into savings, which will help your emergency fund grow fast. And second, if one of you loses your job, you'll be able to continue spending the way you were before. It makes that kind of problem a lot easier to manage because you won't have to adapt to a whole new lifestyle if something goes wrong. Number four, pay off your debts. This is almost essential before a recession. Why? Because recessions can make it hard to cover even your basic daily costs. If you're counting coins to put food on the table, it can be almost impossible to pay your debts too. This means that your debts can quickly spiral totally out of control. Interest rates rise even faster than normal just before and during a recession. So your already big problem can quickly become a disaster. But it won't be if you pay off as much debt as possible before this problem even starts. Make a financial plan to work out how to pay off as much of your debt as possible and then do it. It's also a good idea to call your creditor and ask for an interest rate reduction. Amazingly, 70% of people who asked for a reduction over the last year were given what they asked. You might just get lucky. And if you have a credit card with a $0 interest rate, it can help to transfer your high interest debt into it. But number three, no more credit cards. 
credit cards can feel like a lifesaver when you're low on cash. But if you want to survive a recession, I advise you to forget you even have one. Of course, $0% interest rate cards are slightly different, but not everyone qualifies for those. If you've just made an effort to pay off your credit card debt, you don't want to start the same problem over again by buying everything with your credit card. If you think essentials are crazy expensive now, just think how much more expensive they'll be when you're paying 30% interest on them. Nobody needs those extra expenses in the middle of a recession. Make sure to buy everything with cash you know you have in the bank to avoid surprises and growing debt. Keeping your credit score high is important in times like this, just in case you need to apply for something like a personal loan or mortgage. The simplest way to keep your score up is to avoid debt. How often do you use your credit card? Let us know in the comments and keep watching for our last two tips on how to survive a recession. Number two, find additional income. If you think you definitely don't have the cash to follow our advice, then there's a simple solution. Find another stream of income. A second job is great, or maybe think about a side hustle in the gig economy. There are loads of options online these days where you can make surprising amounts of cash doing jobs you love from the comfort of your own living room. Did you know some skills are almost recession-proof? Think about training and programming, bookkeeping, proofreading, or even childcare. No matter what's happening in the economy, there are always positions in those fields which need to be filled. If you can do them online, even better. Learning skills like this is a great way of investing in yourself. Are you already feeling burned out and can't even think about taking on another job? I understand, but that doesn't mean you have no options for a side hustle. Maybe you should start thinking about consulting work, where you get paid just for your knowledge and time. Or try an even simpler option, like selling stuff you don't need anymore. We all have loads of stuff lying around our houses that we haven't looked at in years. You might find you can make a good bit of cash of your old clothes or those weird things you bought on holiday because they seemed cool at the time. Having a separate stream of income will help act as a buffer if the worst case scenario happens. If you lose your job, you'll still have some cash coming in to help you through it. And finally, our top tip for surviving a recession like a pro. Number one, don't panic. The economy is a bit like a yo-yo. It might be heading downward now, but it'll bounce back soon. On average, recessions only last an average of 11 months. You know you can weather that storm. The one thing that really causes panic is investments. You might have invested loads of cash into something that looks worthless now, but it won't be long before they're back on track. As long as you don't sell while the market's down, it's nothing to worry about. And actually, this might sound a little crazy after what we just said, but if you have enough capital, it could be a good idea to start investing in the middle of a recession. That's because the starting price will likely be lower than normal, so you'll be thanking yourself when the economy starts springing back. The same goes for buying property, but maybe not for cryptocurrencies. They're crashing big time right now, and there's no guarantee they'll bounce back. So be careful how you invest, and ensure you have more than enough cash in your emergency fund to see you through the economic storm before you start making big investments.